it was determined through my study that God created man to be in union with him. Our purpose is for God. This whole thing, the whole creation was created by him and for him. So everything is about God, it's not about us. We would be, I think in Matthew 6.33, it talks about seek ye first the kingdom of, of God and his way of doing and being right. And all of the things that we delight, that, that we desire will be added to us. We don't have to seek the stuff. Mm -hmm. The stuff mm -hmm. will be added to us because we'll be at the right place doing the right thing. Right. Doing what the Father has told us to do, to reverence Him and to keep His commandments. Keep His commandments. Right. You know, I, I'd mm -hmm. really like to piggyback off of what you said about all of this being for God. When we can get a firm understanding of that, when we get to a point where it's not just a, a giving mental assent mm -hmm. that it's all for Him, but that we really understand that this is all about Him and it's all for Him. And I'd like to read the scripture from Revelations that speaks directly to that. Okay. It said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. So they were created for His pleasure, everything. If we're created beings, then we were created for His pleasure, right. not for our pleasure. And I like what Monica says, it does not eliminate our individuality. So we're not cookie cutters. Right. We're all different. Mm -hmm. In fact, we were, God spoke to Himself when He created us. And so we are actually a portion of the Creator, the heavens and the earth and everything else right. that's under it. That was His, his original intent, mm -hmm. was yes. to have sons and daughters that loved Him and wanted to be with Him mm -hmm. throughout all of eternity and were willing to keep His commandments. He only gave Adam one commandment that said, Thou shalt not. Now, He gave him more than one commandment. One commandment. Mm -hmm. But He only gave him one that said, Thou shalt not. And that was the test to see whether or not he wanted to reverence God and keep His commandments. Mm -hmm. And he failed to do so. But thank God that the Lord Jesus didn't fail. That God doing this because He declares the end from the beginning. He doesn't determine our actions because He has given us free will. So He doesn't, you know, put us in a cookie mold and say, this is how you're going to react to your life. Circumstances come up to us, and based on whether we're reverencing Him and keeping His commandment, will determine what we do. No, I see it as such a marvelous plan, such a glorious plan. I have beings that you're going to create that you create as God did, and have them to spend eternity with you, but only have them spend eternity with you if they, through a free will, desire to do so. And that's the only ones that people think that, that God sends people to hell as a punishment, and that's the way it's portrayed. Mm -hmm. God is love, and everything He does is in love. And the only thing that hell says is to the people that say, I don't want to spend eternity with you. I know about you. I believe in you. I see the wonders of your creation, but I don't want to be with you. I want to be my own God. And well, I he think provides we, a place for them to be their own God. Well, from Scripture we learn that we were not created to be independent of God. It's like uh, if you take a rose and it, and it stays in the earth where it gets its nutrients, from, the rose will last longer than when you take it out and put it in a, a vase. Mm -hmm. It still looks like it's alive, but it is actually slowly dying. Right. Cut off from the source of life. So if, when we get cut off from the source of life, which is uh, God, then we are slowly perishing and we don't know it. And see, God said, I am light. In me is no darkness at all. So the people that want to be with Him want to be in the light. The people that don't want to be with Him want to be in the dark. Mm. And so He said, He separated in the beginning in Genesis 1, He separated the light from the darkness. So the people that are separated from Him are in eternal darkness the same way the people that are with Him are in eternal light. It's not a punishment. It said they love darkness more than they love light. Isn't that what the scripture says? Yes, yes, <laughs> so yes, this is, so we, we, if we want to keep a focus on the fact that God is good. If He created everything for His pleasure, it's a good pleasure. It's not a bad. 
Well, you know. he said when he created everything, yeah. everything he created said, it's this good. Is good. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I asked this question, when does a man go in search or quest for God? And the scriptures answered, never with that knowledge. In other words, God went seeking us. We didn't seek God. So, Monica, when you are determining where you are standing in terms of um, working your way into the image and likeness of Jesus, what are some of the exercises that you do to, to bring yourself up to a different level? Well, I, um, I think in knowing uh, who I am in God and, um, and in, even when I didn't know or was still you know, trying to get a pretty good definition, I studied with others. You know, I did a couple of things that uh, would help me strengthen myself and, and uh, uh, encourage myself. By so study, you, study. You, you came to the end of yourself and you realized right. Right. This has to be something other sure. than Sure. I felt that uh, I didn't see uh, much in life in terms of uh, uh, fulfillment. It was like sh short-lived, you know, uh, let's say success or glory or, or pleasure or whatever. And so I, as I re studied the Bible, I, I could get a grasp or a vague understanding that, oh, there's internal happiness, there's internal love, there's internal joy. And how would I go about that? Well, I was studying and studying with groups and then uh, even giving my testimony, you know, as I as I grew, mm -hmm. that test, giving testimony and sharing with others, then I kind of felt, you know, I was getting into uh, of the walk with the Lord as far as uh, what I what I was supposed to be doing, my purpose, mm -hmm. going back to my purpose, and uh, I enjoyed uh, ministering with others. So it was a couple of things that kind of start opening the door, you know, especially fellowshipping and uh, mm -hmm. and studying with others. So we we were all striving to find our purpose and to stay on it. So with our purpose coming back to fearing the Lord, we began to worship together and reverence Him and honor Him, give Him all the glory. And oh, to obey His words, well, that's, that's came back to studying together. Well, what does it mean to you? What does it mean? What does the Bible say? You know, are we, are we applying it to our lives? So that was, that was some of the things, you know, great revelation, knowledge of God started coming that way. Well, that's great what yeah. you just said, yeah. to realize that there, we have temporary joys here, happiness, or times of pleasure, but yeah. there's a place that we can have eternal joy. Yeah. We don't have to, it's, it doesn't have to end. It's not, it's, it's nothing that we can ever see God, there's no end with Him. It says we will go with Him forever, going from one state of glory to another, like eternally. Yeah. With respect to those that um, still believe that their plans are their plans. I think scripture addresses it by saying, many are the plans in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's plan that will be established. I paraphrase that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our personal goals and plans, how does that work with respect to God's purpose and plan for our lives? Well, going back to the beginning, our purpose is to reverence Him and to keep His commandments. Now His commandments, that He's given us are all to bless us. Mm -hmm. And then He wants us to do what He said by being a blessing to others. I will bless you and make you a blessing. This was the idea. So to be a blessing, He gave us all gifts so that we could bless others with our gifting to bring them to the knowledge that we have mm -hmm. been able to attain about Him where what your lifestyle and what you're saying that mm -hmm. once you can share with that sh share that with other people mm -hmm. that this is this is not all there is there's an eternal joy there's everlasting happiness there's peace then we can turn around and we say well rather than doing what God has gifted us to do I want to go over here and do this mm -hmm. he said no I didn't give you the gift to do that I gave you the gift to do the work of the ministry for the building up of the church or the body of Christ. He says, this is the gifting that I've given you. Say, no, I want to go and do this. Well, he said his plan and his purpose for our lives would prevail. So when we go counter to his plans, and his plan absolutely will not fail, well, his plan frustrates our plan. Even though we may have financial success, which the world measures, I think, totally as success, I think even when they start saying, well, if you're happy, healthy, actually the world says if you're financially prosperous, 
they consider that success. And the Lord said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? You have the most toys. Mm -hmm. You died with the most toys. What does it gain you if you've lost your soul? That's not prosperity. Prosperity is to live forever, excuse me, with the Lord. This is what he created us for, to live eternally with him. And he set up a system that is so good. And what we might discuss, we're going to do a part two to this, is the fact that people get their purpose, their gifting, and their work confused. Yeah, right. Yes, I was uh, looking at a teacher, right. and they were um, reminiscing about how they were in childhood. You know, I talked a lot, or um, I was very good with working with other children, and they confused their gift, their talent with their purpose. The fact that a person talks a lot doesn't necessarily mean their purpose would be to go somewhere and just talk a lot. No, it doesn't mean that I should be a public speaker because I talk a lot. Right. But he gives us the ability to talk a lot, and then he'll give us the knowledge of what to talk about. Mm -hmm. And see, now when he gives us the knowledge of what to talk about, now we're using the gift to follow his command and do what he said our gifts were to be used to edify and build up others. And in fact, scripture tells us that we, we don't work for the Lord because he doesn't need anything from that which he created. We work with him. So if we're to work with someone and we're to be going together, it says how can two go to this in the same direction if they're not on one accord? So then we need to find out from scripture how God is, because we've been made in his image and his likeness. And that means we are to acquire his characteristics and his nature so that we can accomplish that which he has called us to do. Now, I know we don't have enough time left to go into this in detail, but God set up, Jesus, uh, God set up a kingdom. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came and he said, the kingdom of God is back. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's right here where you can touch it. Inside the kingdom of God, there is work for people to do. You're not just sitting around all day trying to learn how to play a harp. <laughs> there's work. Or to sing. Or to sing. There, there's work for us to do. And the work that we're to do is to follow his instructions and his mm -hmm. commandments. And he said, the work you're, that you're to do with the gift that you have been given is to build up and edify each other. So here's a kingdom where everyone in the kingdom has come to a place of maturity where they're not concerned with their own need because as you just said, all our needs are supplied. So now all of our needs are supplied, so what can I bless someone else with? Mm -hmm. Do I see someone else in need? Are they in need of information that I have been given? Are they in need of the grace of God that they don't know about? Are they in need of salvation, those that haven't, haven't received the Lord yet or acknowledged that Jesus is Lord? So he gives us all of these gifts and talents so that we will do the work, what does it say in Ephesians? The work of the ministry. The work, right. To the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. And we see a good example of this in the Old Testament. And we'll have to take that okay. up next time. But to review then, um, the sole duty of man is to reverence God and to keep his commandments. And in so doing, we will then complete the purpose that he has for man on the earth.